hi guys welcome to faith's consecrated space and today we're going to be talking about fasting okay why do we fast okay what are the reasons before you do something you have to know the reasons behind them or you have to know the reasons why they are powerful you just don't do things because others are doing them that would be the utter ruin of your life if you keep doing things because people are doing things okay so why do we fast i'm going to talk about some reasons why fasting is necessary as you know christians and people are always telling me i have a chronic illness i have this i have that i can't fast sometimes you have to know when the enemy is just trying to stop you from fasting you know sometimes there are some sicknesses in your life that you know the doctor can say yeah you can't go without food for a certain while but sometimes the enemy likes to put us in boxes so that we are not able to fulfill our potentials okay the enemy sometimes like to use, you know, generation, for example, diabetes, you know, your family, there's a history of diabetes in your family. Your mother has diabetes. Your father has diabetes, diabetes everywhere, left, right and center. But sometimes I feel like that can be a box, you know, that can stop you from actually living the life that you're supposed to live as a child of God. So if you have a chronic illness, you have to discuss that with the presence of God. Don't just stay in the boxes that medicine has given you, because guess what? You have a great physician, Jesus Christ. A doctor of all doctors. So you can align with him on that. So why do we fast? Let's talk about the first reason. But before we get there, let us pray. Dear Holy Spirit of the living God, I pray that as I speak, you are the one that is heard. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first reason why we fast is that when you fast, fasting shakes you. Okay? And it brings all your problems and spirits disturbing you to the surface some of you notice that when you fast that's when you want to watch porn the most that's when you want to text that man that you that man that you you've been talking to that you stopped talking to because you became born again you just want to text him you just want to go back and sleep with that one man these are the problems that were in you before you started fasting fasting has a way of shaking you and churning your insides to bring out all the spirits and the disturbances and all the things that have been hiding in the corners and in the crevices of your soul fasting will bring out all those things fasting doesn't hide it it, it makes your spirit accessible to God and God is able to remove things as he sees fit so you will notice that when you're fasting that is when you want to smoke for for you people who are smokers you know you smoke weed cigarettes whatever that's when you want to do all the sinful things don't fret don't panic that is because they like the Lord is bringing out all the things that are making your Christian work problematic because before you can treat addictions the addictions have to be brought to the surface and they have to be broken so that's what fasting does it shakes you shakes you shakes you makes you emit every single thing that has been stopping you from living a Christian life so if you want to get a thorough purification if you want to be thoroughly shaken you have to fast because fasting is what will make you pure by bringing out all your problems one by one dealing with these spirits you will become pure you'll become refined but it's one of the ways to make your refining process effective so number two fasting breaks you many christians come to god with pride many christians come to god with a lack of humility many christians come to god with lack of compassion lack of kindness when you fast effectively it is supposed to break you it's a great way to dethrone spirits stubborn spirits like pride leviathan narcissistic personality disorders and all unclean spirits like laziness and gluttony fasting is a great way to break and dethrone spirits if you want to be truly broken by god the first thing you should do is give yourself unto fasting and prayer that would break and dethrone any other spirit that has mounted itself above the knowledge of god fasting will break those spirits and dethrone every uncleanliness from your life that's one of the reasons why you should fast if you notice that you are a christian that you're not compassionate you're not kind you are prideful you don't you never ag admit your wrongs you are dealing with a, a stubborn spirit you're dealing with a levi than the spirit of pride you need to go into deep fasting and self-denial to break that spirit because the opposite of pride is humility and humility comes when there is a presence of self-denial fasting brings self-denial it helps you to deny self and so you are able to be broken by god because the only way god is going to break you is if you even let him but if you have strongholds and spirits who are enthroned in your heart fasting breaks those spirits and um thirdly the third reason you should fast is fasting teaches you closeness with god through self-discipline 
there are some aspects of spiritual maturity that can only be revealed through prayer and fasting yes when you come to the lord you know, you are in the shallow parts of Christianity. You're being shallow, you know, praying, reading your Bible. But if you want to go deep into the deeper things, you need to fast and deny self. You need to fast and deny all the pleasures that your flesh wants. And fasting is a great way to do that. You understand? It teaches you how to be close to God through discipline. Because people only want to be close to God through love, mercy, and grace. They don't want to enter the nitty gritty of the gospel where the mature people are which is lots of fasting and self-denial. So when you start a routine of fasting, what that does is that you teach yourself to go first to the spirit. You teach yourself to react first from the spirit. When you fast, you will notice that you are more spirit oriented and your flesh has been relegated to the background because when you fast, you teach your spirit how to dominate your flesh and you teach your spirit how to rule over your body. So you will notice that as you keep devoting your time to fasting and prayer, you become more spirit oriented. You go to the spirit first. You don't act like other people. You're not quick to anger and quick to curse like other people who are you know not mature in the spirit because you have gained maturity to through self-discipline one of the ways you know you're becoming more mature as a christian is how much self-control that you're able to display and fasting is one of the great ways to access self-control that will help you to be mature in the spirit even when it comes to walking in and maintaining your spiritual calling some of you have prophetic uh, gifts some of you have gifts of healing gift of tongue you are you have many things you're walking in you know your spiritual gifts fasting is the is a great way to keep yourself locked in Fasting is the great way to maintain your calling, fasting. And even if you don't know your spiritual calling, as you keep fasting, as you keep fasting, as you keep asking the Lord through self-discipline, self-denial and humility, you will know your calling. Fasting brings your humility to God as a sacrifice. Fasting makes your self-denial a sacrifice to God. It goes up to God like incense. Do you understand? So, number four, okay? Fasting teaches you not to obsess over things that please the flesh. Yes, fasting teaches you not to obsess over the things that please the flesh because the same way you stop obsessing over food physically is the same way you stop obsessing over things that will please your flesh. People think fasting is just about denying yourself from food. No, it's not. In the, in the physical realm, you may be just it may just be you going hungry that's what your physical body is feeling but in the spirit in the spiritual realms you are teaching yourself how to detach from everything that the world offers you are teaching yourself how to transform and cling onto god's presence without having to please yourself in the in your flesh so you are teaching your spirit how to rely solely on God as a source of pleasure, as a source of enjoyment, as a source of happiness. God becomes your main source of any kind of validation. You are able to detach yourself away from the, the world when you de devote your time to fasting and prayer. What that teaches you to do is, is that you make God the supply of all forms of joy so you don't find anything in the world that can pull you away from god's presence the reason why you keep backsliding is because your heart is tied to things fast and you will see that those things will begin to detach themselves from you the only true thing that will give you joy and peace is the presence of god fasting is the best way to make god your one and only supply of all kinds of joy and happiness so as you're depriving your, your, yourself of food in the, in the physical, what you're doing to your spirit man is that you're teaching it to rely solely on God for its essential needs. You're teaching your spirit how to survive only by the, by the word of God. So the reason why you deny yourself of food is because food in the physical, it represents just food. But in the spiritual, food represents is a surrogate. For any other thing that can give you pleasure, any other thing that can give you satisfaction, any other thing that can give you uh, uh, peace outside God. As you deny yourself of food, you deny yourself of those things. Number five. Fasting teaches you the power of self-denial and teaches you humility and also exposes the spirits that stop self-denial. Yes, fasting exposes the spirits that stop self-denial. One of those spirits in particular is gluttony. Yes. If you notice when you want to fast, that is when your mom decides to cook a five-star Gordon Ramsay rated meal. 
that's when the fridge is full filled with chocolates juices even new things that you've never dreamed of the fridge is filled with those things and then you can't fast anymore because the spirit of gluttony has set out a program in the spirit realm that all it has to do is just make sure your mom has extra money to buy all those sweet sugary lovely things we all love to eat including myself and you will not fast again so spirits can create programs like that just for you to stop your self-denial process so that you don't get spiritual maturity so you have to notice that 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 pattern in your life if you're the kind of person that every time you want to fast that is when your mom decides to cook you the best meals those traditional meals you love so much on other days when you're not fasting she doesn't cook she'll tell you spaghetti for five days but the days when you say okay lord i want to fast for three days that's when your mommy will say okay this is the time to shine she cooks all the exotic meals you need to learn that is the spirit of gluttony and the spirit of you know uh, uh selfishness in the sense of you know you must eat that thing your mom has cooked it's a spirit. I know it. I know people look at me and think I'm crazy. But when you become spiritually mature, you will understand these things. So, fasting exposes the spirit that stops or the spirits that stop your self-denial process. And one of those spirits in particular is gluttony. So, if you notice that you're the kind of person that you always have snacks, you're always chewing on something, food, even if you're thin. Listen, gluttony is not just about obesity or being fat. No, if you're a thin person that you're constantly chocolates, you eat chocolates, you eat pancakes, you go to the fridge, you drink more juice, you drink Coke, you go out, eat McDonald's, hamburger. It doesn't matter who is who. It doesn't matter who is fat or who is not. It's the spirit of gluttony. That's it. So don't think, oh, because I'm slim, because I'm not too fat. I'm no. You can also be struggling from the spirit or struggling with the spirit of gluttony, and you're slimmer than me. Do you understand? So. Let, let, let me just put that out there. Number six, fasting gives you the strength to withstand the enemy. If you notice in the book of Matthew chapter four, it says Jesus, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And then the tempter came to tempt him. The enemy thought that tempting Jesus when he was hungry would be the way to get him to fall. But he didn't know that as he was weakened in the physical, his spirit man was stronger than ever. And the only way you can withstand the enemy is with the pressure of your spirit man. Fasting adds pressure to your spirit man. The only way you can withstand... See, you need to start training your flesh to go on long marathons, not sprints. And the reason why the enemy is able to get you quickly is because you you don't to train your spirit to go long distances if you fast for a few hours you're, you're tired you eat no train yourself train your spirit so fasting gives you the ability to train your spirit to go for long distances because listen when the enemy tempts you the, the enemy doesn't tempt you for two seconds and then he goes he tempts you for a week straight he tempts you for two weeks straight some of you the enemy i'm sure you for the last week or so you have been getting urges to do things that is the enemy the enemy can spend one week tempting you one the enemy can spend a month trying to get you to do one sin this is the kind of adversary that you're dealing with you can't afford not to fast don't listen to all these lollipop gospels oh christianity is hard christianity is not this hard don't listen to them they are weak people who want god to do what they want for them but they don't want to do anything for god you don't listen to people like that you listen to people who encourage you to be disciplined and that's why the enemy just grabs your soul because you don't he knows that he can outlast you <laughs> the enemy knows that he can outlast you so he's not worried because the enemy has been trained to nudge you and nudge you and nudge you till you give up so fasting what fasting does to you is that it enables you to withstand and withstand and withstand until you win that's why the weapons will be formed the weapons will be fashioned but they will not prosper but you too, as Christians, you must learn to stand and withstand the enemy because Satan can keep pushing, pushing, poking, poking. This, what, this, this is exactly what the enemy does. He pokes and pokes and pokes, 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 pokes until you're like, oh, leave me alone. He will keep poking, twisting, pinching you. That's why he's a chinch. You know how, you know, he just keeps twisting at your skin, tugging. That's how temptations feel. They are tugging and that's what the enemy does. He'll continue to tug and tug and tug at you. That's what he does. He can do that for years until you sin. That is the kind of enemy you're dealing with. You have to learn to withstand things. You can't afford to sit down and say, I won't fast. I don't need to. What? So fasting teaches you how to keep up and outlast the enemy.
Okay. Number seven, fasting teaches you how to be vulnerable with God and how to turn that vulnerability into strength against the enemy. Yeah, fasting teaches you because, because when you fast, so much of your life is brought out before God. Your sexual tendencies, your dirtiness, your carnality, your pride, your loss, your greed, your lying, your stealing. Some of you are envious and jealous. Some of you have murderous thoughts. All those things are brought before God. Fasting makes it in such a way that you are never hidden. Your heart is never hidden before God. So that vulnerability, knowing that God knows all that information about you and still loves you, it helps you to come to God and be open before God like a book. And then God will now show you what to do with the vulnerability. Because when you're vulnerable before God, the enemy is aware. Because the enemy constantly wants to chase you out of God's presence, out of God's love. He can't, but he keeps trying, okay? He keeps trying because he's dumb. So, God will teach you how to use that vulnerability as, a, as your weapon, as your strength against the enemy. Fasting teaches you that. I cannot explain this unless you start fasting, unless you live a life where fasting, prayer, worship is the norm. You, I can't explain. So fasting teaches you how to be vulnerable with God because it reveals the sides of you you never even knew existed. And God still loves you through it. So that vulnerability, that knowledge creates a space where God becomes your safe space. Get that? I ate. 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 Yes, I ate. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay, number eight. Fasting gives you wisdom on how to operate in your wilderness season and how to submit to the spirit of God while you're in that season. You know, some of you are like, I don't have any friends. I'm isolated. Blah, blah, blah. No one talks to me. You see, the spirit of God also led Jesus Christ to the wilderness. Okay. The wilderness season is necessary for every Christian. You're fine. You're not. It's okay. You'll be okay. But what fasting does in that season is that it teaches you how to operate. It gives you wisdom. It gives you advice. It pushes you into your potentials, how to operate in that isolation season and how to submit to the spirit of God. Because when you're fasting, your, 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 your senses are sharp because you're denying yourself of food. So your spiritual senses are picking things up. So in that season, in that time, you're able to operate under the supervision of the Holy Spirit in that season. Number nine, Fasting breaks age-old structures and generational patterns. Like I said, your mom has diabetes. Your great-grandma had, had diabetes. Your great-great-great-grandma had diabetes. You have diabetes now. Your sister has diabetes. All those, I know that med medicine can explain. Oh, it's hereditary. Hereditary means generational curse. That's what it means in, in biblical scriptural terms. Hereditary equals generational patterns that must be broken. So when you fast, you break yourself and you break your generation coming uh, uh, behind you. You give them a chance at freedom. The freedom you don't have. Some of you have mental, chronic mental illnesses. Some of you, your parents, your mothers especially, have been known to choose the worst men. And you too, you as a woman, you are still choosing the same men that your, your, your mother chose, your great-grandmother chose. You are seeing the pattern. My dear, it is time to lock in. It's time to fast and break those structures. There's no time. Number 10, fasting exposes triggers of the enemy. Some of you don't know your triggers. And that's why it's so easy to get you to act out of God's identity. You don't know your triggers. One of my main triggers is anger. And how did I know that? Fasting. Fasting makes you, you know, even Jesus Christ, he was, he, the enemy wanted to trigger Jesus Christ in the wilderness. You can imagine. And that is the king of kings, the son of God and God himself. The enemy wanted to trigger him to act outside his identity as God and as the son of God. So if you don't know your triggers, the best way to start and the best way to identify said triggers is by fasting. Do you understand? I think I've pinched myself a little too much there. But anyway, if you want to know how to withstand and how to discern your triggers and how to know when the enemy is pulling at one of your triggers, fasting is the way to go. And number 11, fasting exposes any spiritual blindness that stops you from being introspective. Lack of self-awareness is not godly. There are many Christians who don't know themselves. They judge others. They go out there and 
persecute others, but they never think of themselves. Let me tell you something. Listen to me quick. Self-awareness is not godly. As Christians, we are supposed to know our faults. We are supposed to know the things we are capable of. I'm capable of anger. I'm capable of pride. So I know these things. And so I'm able to fast and pray to cut them off in my life periodically. And that's why so many Christians have horrible characters. You meet Christians, but they are the meanest. You meet Christians, but they are the most unkind. Because they, they never let the Spirit of God do an introspection perspective work in their in their hearts it is possible to be fasting and praying every single day but still be mean if you do not let the holy spirit show you who you are and if you reject the holy spirit's analysis of your life you will forever be you will forever be spiritually blind to self-awareness and that in itself can land you in the fires of hell so those are 11 reasons why you fast and i pray that as you start fast and i think the next video is I will talk about how to fast and, you know, give you hours and all of that. And yeah, basically, thank you for chilling with me today at Faith's Consecrated Space. Goodbye and God bless.